And welcome to the Bastards Inquiry Craven Preview Show. Hope you enjoyed the new jingles there. That was uh, Haft and Speciosa. Haft won the 2004 Craven before going on to win the 2000 Guineas. And Speciosa was the last filly to go on to win the Nelgwyn and then the 1000 Guineas. So I hope you found that interesting stat there to start that. Now, so me and John have got some belters for you over the three days. And we start tomorrow with a competitive looking card the opener is the one o'clock at Newmarket and it is the Alex Scott maiden stakes which is usually a very hotly contested three year old maiden John have you any thoughts in this? Um, I did have a really good panic note on Fast Medicine from uh, York last year yeah um, I, I, I thought this would make up into a three year old I, I was quite pleased he didn't run it anymore I have to give it that say to it, York. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm very curious to see how it gets on tomorrow. I, I probably wouldn't expect it to win. I think um, 10 furlongs might be its bag. Yeah. But um, I'm very, very interested to see what sort of physical progress that one's made over the winter. So, certainly an interesting one. Uh, uh, it's related to uh, it's quite a mixture in the pedigree uh, Cobra Eye in there the yeah. dam the dam was a, um, a mile and a half uh, um, interesting as well that you've picked one of Peter's because the, the Peter Chapel I am obviously is not the likes of, of of what he was in his heyday obviously with the not without the back in the sangster um, but you know 200,000 as a yearling um, you know it's very very well bred and I always like it when you when you give me a, a paddock nod because some of your paddock nod, nods in the past have been very invaluable for, few, uh, for for down the line. So that's an interesting one, fast medicine. Um, the favourite in the race, Magical Land, is and uh, been put in about on the tissue about eight to eleven, four yeah. to five. Um, the only thing I can say about that is it ran two quite mysterious races uh, on both starts. Obviously, got a lot of ability because. When you're giving the likes of Naval Crown about five lengths start and you're maiden, and you, you, you're going past that horse in a finish, Naval Naval Crown's obviously you know rated in the hundreds, and I believe it's in the free handicap. Mm. Um, you know, obviously that's a serious horse, but it has worried me. What it just seems to drop the shopping mm. uh, on both on both occasions. It just seems to just find itself in a terrible position, and then stay on late. So. I would, if you're playing running or if, if, if you are a, a strong fancier of Magical One, I'd be a bit wary of that. Would, would you agree with me on that? I would entirely. I mean, I, I, I personally don't give Franco a completely clean bill of health, as I say. No. Um, I think he can throw some fairly spooky buggers. And uh, it wouldn't surprise me if this one went the wrong way, to be honest. No, it's interesting. I mean, I've, I've had this conversation with, with a few other people, both in Bloodstock, professional punters, and, you know, Frankels aren't really kind of spoke very well of a lot of times. A lot of them can be very tricky, very, you know, a lot of temperament in them. Um, obviously, the, the good ones usually turn out to be really good. Um, but certainly a bit of, yeah, I, I, I know where you're coming from there. I mean, at the end of the day, the horse was fussy himself, wasn't he? You know, so I mean, yeah, you know, he wouldn't have had the temperament he'd pick to be a stallion. But obviously, you've got to run with it because of what he's done on the track and the paper behind him says there's no fluke about it. So he's going to throw some champions, no question about it. For sure, absolutely. But he's, he's, he's also going to chuck a few spoke monkeys out as well. Well, I think we've seen that so far. The evidence yeah. is there. Evidence is key. Um, yeah. Newmarket this week, sometimes, I mean, this is the bane of... We've got the sirens for John. We've, we've got the sirens for John. Though. There we go. We're, we're, we're two minutes into the show. We've done it. Princess, uh, Princess one, team, 
one for you, John Nolan, there. Um, so anyway, carrying on, uh, Newmarket this week normally is a bit of a front-running sort of gas hole, if you like, and the reason for that usually is that we usually have westerly winds blowing the wind, blowing them from behind. Uh, checking the latest weather, we're looking at northeasterlies this week. Not re- not particularly strong, but it's more in the faces than than behind. So I don't think tactics is, will be as it. Sometimes at Newmarket, you think, oh god, if you if you're not out in front or sat sat on the on the hinds of the leader, you may as well pack up and and and, and go home. But I don't think it might be like that this year. This meeting with with the northeasterly just. Just helping, you know, like horses off the pace come into it. Uh, another race that interests me on the first day was the two ten John, the yeah. uh, the the seven furlong conditions race, a, a tremendous race. Uh, only only four <coughs> runners because it uh, sounds like Thunder's a non runner, but only the four runners. But uh, I thought four of, of pretty decent quality. Yes, I, I agree entirely. I think it's a it's a really tidy race. I think. Um, Duke of Mantua is quite a nice horse, actually. It was a big ass for that first time up, getting all that way on bad ground. Um, I wasn't surprised when he wasn't up to it. Um, I didn't think he looked just in need of the run as well. Yeah. I, think, um, I think anything that breaks that uh, will know it's had a race, you know. Um, I know you're not splitting the atom, tipping the neighbor money shot, um, but I, I, I don't think that will be really, really hard to beat. Well, when it when it made its reappearance, uh, it was fourth in a, in a in a sort of a very hotly contested uh, Curra handicap. Obviously, carry, giving a lot of weight away, uh, carrying ten stone, rated one hundred and four, um, and. I did know, and I'm not after time in here because obviously I can't tell people. But at the time when I saw them at the start, I thought it was carrying a fair bit of condition. Um, I thought, yeah. To, 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 be, to be five to two favourite, obviously it's, it's done more on reputation and stable. I think sometimes rather than actual uh, form. Sometimes, though, not in the case of this. Obviously, it's, it's a smart uh, colt. But but the, the thing for me was I, I did think it was short, so I think it'll improve a lot for that run. So. If you're looking at that horse and thinking, well, that, that form isn't amazing, it, for me it was a little bit short uh, uh, of, of peak. Of peak. Um, they've gone for the Tom tie first time. Would that put you off? No, because he likes fiddling about it and he's, he's done me Tom ties, cheap races. Yeah. He chucks anything at him. Yeah. Um, I mean, for, for me, I, I'm, I'm obviously I'm, I'm a no-bet race here. Uh, Noble Dynasty, I felt, was... Uh, a useful sort last season because on debut it gave track position away to the winner Modern News um, who basically had first run this did everything wrong but you know and it's a much better better horse than the winner and then went on to beat uh, Rifleman rather impressively at Kempton so it's a very difficult race to predict because you, you've got one side of the coin where Duke of Mantua probably achieved more in terms of overall form, but Noble Dynasty could also also improve. Um, and I just I just found the race pretty hard. <coughs> Mustabek as well. Um, I mean, basically that had had one run for Charles Hills. Uh, I thought did exceptionally well by Invincible Spirit winning a heavy ground on debut. That was quite taking to, to do that on heavy ground. Invincible Spirits don't usually like that. Uh, as a rule of thumb, um, and Rasky Early, who's rated ninety-five, makes up the outside of the field at eight. So I'm going to sit on the fence. Um, John likes uh, Duke of Mantua, worthy favourite. Not sure that John's going overboard at even money. It's not usually his style to. No, 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 no. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be more interested in seeing how the other two cope with him. To be honest, because I, th- I think both of those are one further than them out before the season's out. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, 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 it's just a really interesting race, really. Yeah, um, without doubt, on the first day, uh, the the race of the day, and obviously the most premier race of the day, which is disgustingly. I mean, this this is unbelievable. We've got the field of stakes at three twenty, which is a a listed contest, um, and obviously, as a, over the years, has attracted a lot of top class types. 
and it's 17,000 to the winner. I, I, I just find it incredible, John. This year is in serious trouble unless the VHA dress with the metal and sort some of this out, you know. Um, you can't have horses of this calibre running for this kind of money. It's No. It's beyond our ages. Se- 17,000. I mean, you've, uh, leaving the market, <coughs> uh, royal champion of Roger Varian's, and um, he was mightily impressive in his maiden win. Did a fair bit wrong, missed the kick, um, showed great foot, you know, to get there in a, in a good time, um, sort of. And the thing is with Varian, if he has a first time out winner, he, he usually leaves them short from what I can see. Um, it's always worthy of note, and, and I think it's noteworthy he comes to this race. But make no mistake, John, this race is is a really good field, and do you agree? Yes, I do. Um, it can often be a bit of an anti-climax, this race. You, you, you know, you maybe get two decent houses in it, you know, but I think there's, there's a fair bit of nice kick in this. Yes. Um, Secret Protector is second in 100 to 30. Charlie Appleby, um, that was incredibly impressive at Maidan. Obviously difficult to know uh, what it beat out there, but it was also impressive um, when it won its Maiden, even though it was 4-1 to one on, it was still uber impressive, I felt. Again, it's very difficult to get an angle on horses like that. Island Avenue, the same, uh, won its last two, um, pretty, very, very cosily in, in good figures. Um so again, then you've got Aidan O'Brien with his tongue tied at Arturo Toscanini. Are you only fancy in this, John, or anything you can pin your, pin your colours to? I, I really like World Champion, to be honest. I think it's a lovely ass. Yeah. And, and I hope to see it win tomorrow. I, I, I'm, I'm not inclined to pack it at 3 to 1. But um, I, I'd like to see a good performance from it. Yeah, I think that would confirm my opinion of it, you know. Yeah, I think Sheikh, Sheikh uh, obeyed this. I reckon this will be one of his sort of main hopes this season. Um, I, would, and, I wouldn't be surprised if this won well to see him drop back to the guineas. Possibly. Possibly. Does he have a guineas entry? I believe it does. Um, you're not wrong. He has a guineas entry, a Dante, a Derby, an Irish mm. Derby. Mm. Um, yeah, it's, uh, he certainly entered up. Um, yeah, I, I, me and John both concur here. We, we think, I thought this was very impressive. The clock also backs this up. So often when you see an impressive performance, I, when, when the clock does back up your gut feeling, I always think it's a good sign. So we think that's the right favourite. Uh, three to one is the sort of price, roundabouts. I don't think that's bad, to be honest. I, I think I think it's no. a sport, sporting play. Uh, rather than, you can't, it's kind of race you can't go banker on because it is a, it is a tough affair, without a doubt. Um, a lot of potential improvers, isn't there? Yes, there is. Um, right, we move on from a very a very classy fielder. So me and John sort of like Royal Champion there, so if you do, it might boost your confidence or make it worse, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Le- Leslie might agree to that on Twitter. Leslie will probably agree to our... Uh, that. He'll, think, he'll be pressing pink, John. Oh, <laughs> Leslie will be clear saying that. <laughs> uh, right, we move on to the 355, <coughs> which is a seven furlong handicap. Um, and Lincoln favourite, Eastern World, who disappointed in the Lincoln, uh, is 100 to 30 market leader, John. Did you have anything like in mind for this race? If you're ever going to uh, forgive a horse for running the Lincoln, uh, given this one's running style, you'd probably and pick a race like this for it, wouldn't you, to, to gain its reputation. Um, you know, especially assuming all known biases stand, um, because you'd think off the front end this would have a hell of a chance, really. Um, I'm disinclined to, to bet it because I, I didn't particularly fancy it for Lincoln, um, but I think them that did will probably go in again, giving it another chance. Um, yeah. I thought, actually, I thought Riot was desperately unlucky last time. I know it's a, it's, it's a bit of a twonk, 
Um, but you know, I think um, it's it's possibly a, a better performer this year, and uh, I think um, I think that one can go well tomorrow. Right. Well, I, I think it's like Jimmy Tarbot used to say on Winner Takes All. We have a difference of opinion, Jeffrey. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, Riot for me is, I think, is a great eight pig. Um, and I think at Chelmsford last time, you, you're right. It, it looked unlucky to the eye, but for me, the horse was just wanting to hang in all the time. It just hang in, hang in, hang in. And I just felt that that Riot was. The, the one to take on in the race. I'd maybe also want to take the favourite on, but I'll tell you why. Because this time last year, when, when uh, Charlie Appleby was interviewed, mm-hmm. and he said, he said East, Eastern World's ideal trip would probably be 10 furlongs, right? So th- this was this was last year. And I know yeah. things change. One, it's, one, it's made in over a mile. He mm-hmm. said, yeah, I don't, think, I don't think we'll see the best of him till, till, till he goes over 10 furlongs. Yeah. So... And obviously, he, he went he went to Maidan uh, the start of this season, won, won impressively over the mile and one. Yeah. Right? What's happened last time? Let's read between the lines here, right? So, it's a heavily backed Lincoln favourite. And by the way, I know certain professionals that had had a lot of money on this. Um, they were sort of like shocked at how badly it ran. Mm. When we know how badly it ran and why it ran badly is because thick, thick doiler decided to take it to the front, blast it, and basically yeah. race collapsed. And, and which, I, so you know what's happened. Yeah, this, is, this is what happens when you listen to jockey speak. The jockey's got off, and he's not blamed himself for going too hard or, you know, being too forceful. He's not he's saying got it off, He's got off. He said, I haven't got a mile. I haven't got a mile, Gov. You, know, uh, uh, you know, before the furlong, Paul, I will find out I was gassed out in the last furlong. Now, it's the biggest load of bollocks ever. And this horse is not a seven furlong animal. I'm not saying it will win because it obviously got the class. You can, you can see it's a classy type. Um, but for me, I, I'm one of these that I can see them doing it again. Right. So they blast off, blast out when I don't, it's probably, probably is a mile and a quarter horse, but it, it doesn't want, I don't know what this, why they just trying to make the running with it. It doesn't make any sense. Um, so I'm against Eastern World for that reason because of what Boiler will have probably said. Mm-hmm. Um, probably an idiot. Um, and I'm going for a boil over in this. And this is my best bet on the Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to have one each, one each, John, for Tuesday. So you can <coughs> see uh, after this, uh, mm-hmm. what you know, you've picked out for the first day. So my best bet on the Tuesday is Tinto each way at a rather... Juicy price, 1620 to 1. We're looking at for Tinto. Amanda Perrett, who's in better form this year than she was last. She was very, very poor last year, I felt. And just didn't really get clicking at any stage in the year. She started off much better uh, this season, as if like um, Mark Perrett had a kick in the ghoulies. And um, this horse last year, if you look, beat first time out, beat the uh, stewards. Uh, Cup winner Summergand. Now you'll say, well, yes, it was behind Summergand last time out of Lingfield. Well, the horse has won from 15 on the all weather. I don't think it actually liked running around bends and turns and crap on the all weather. You look at its form on the turf only, it's five from 29. Um, its last run, it's finished six to Abraham Gold at Doncaster in a good handicap. It's, it's running, uh, uh, it's running group threes before. Um, He's got strong form. I mean, we're only looking at 5th of July last year. It was third to Al Ali, John, um, Mm -hmm. in the uh, Coral Charge. And Liberty Beach. Al Ali won. um, A. Ali won. Liberty Beach was second. This was third. Um, And seven furlongs is no problem. Um, You know, it'll get a covering ride. And I just feel this, uh, at big prices, I think it's a little bit overlooked because it's got high class form and if it, I mean you know for a fact what they're going to do with Eastern World it's going to blast off isn't it yeah. it will blast off because it's dropping in trip they're not going to take a lead when they no. drop it in trip they'll do it again they'll blast off blast off only it's a north easterly so you haven't got the tailwind either um, no. uh, as I said so for those reasons I'm out 
Um, and I'm going for a bit of value there with Amanda Perrett's Tinter. And that's my best best bet of the first day each way. John, what would be your best bet of the first day? Uh, in the male handicap over eight. Um, oh, that's the one. We, we haven't covered that one. The horse Sada is three to one favourite for this. Yeah, um, it's the killed uh, you know, market. Yeah. You know, um, the horse is on a workable mark. Um, Franny will give it the red that's required. Yeah. I, I don't see a lot of competition for the front end. Yeah. And uh, I think it's probably a bet for now to each way. Currently about five to one, nine to two. So yeah. John is on the each way thieve there with overwrite. So on day one, best bets, John overwrite the 245. Um, each way a pleasure. And I have gone for Tinto at a price of, I think it's around 16, 20 to one. Let's have each way a pleasure. Um, if you can nick four places with somebody, then do that as well. Uh, but I thought Tinto could run, outrun its odds in the centre. You, you convinced me. Yes, at 3.55. Uh, got some good form from last season and, and better on turf than the all-weather. Right, we'll move on to Wednesday. And again, top class, top class action. Uh, always love new market. We start off with a two-year-olds where they've not ran, so unless we have any info, we can't really help you there. Um, the next race is the six furlong Weatherby's handicap. Um, uh, Eleven go to post. John, have you any? View? Did you did you have a look at this race? I had a, a, a very very brave look. At it was too hard for me to be honest. Um, I, uh, I, I couldn't come up with anything worthwhile. Like. Yeah, um, right. I've, I've got something interested in this. Um, right. uh, only thing is, like, just just a <clears throat> word of warning with Newmarket, and I think it's important as a punter you study the draw because, as we know, sometimes there's a rail bias. Sometimes it can suit the far side. Sometimes it suits nothing, and it's fine. But there the can be definite biases at Newmarket. I don't know why this is. I, I honestly can't explain. Sometimes you always need the stand rail. Sometimes it's the far rail. Sometimes it doesn't matter. You come down the middle, whatever. Um, but there just sometimes seems biases. And this horse is drawn in stall one, Concierge, trained by, uh, wouldn't be one of my favourites, to be honest, Michael Atwater. But um, I've they, they've done really, they've been pretty smart with this horse because... Again, this is another horse that, for me, is probably slightly better on turf than the all-weather. And um, the, the, the handicap has married the marks up. So it, it's basically finished last season on the turf uh, off 90, finishing third right. to turn, turn the Baroon. Only got beat three quarters of a length at Ascot. Yeah. And so they've, 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 then, they've then sort of, I think what they've done is looking at the SPs, 28 to 1 Risk Clutterbuck, 50 to 1 William Carson, 28 to 1 William Carson, three times on the all weather. They've got it down to 84. So mm-hmm. you're, now, you're now back in the ball, ball game off 84, back on turf, um, where you've had four four victories on, t- on turf before. This was 10th in the Stewards Cup, only got beat three lengths off 87. So now you're off 84 in not a Stewards Cup. And yeah. this again, I, I, I haven't seen the prices, um, but I'm guessing that this could be. Oh, hang on, I've seen, I've seen some prices, and Concierge has been putting at fourteen to one. So I thought this could be. Uh, the, the books Andrea Zane. I think this could be a nice each way about fourteen to one, subject to stall one being not a disadvantage because I, I have no idea. Come when come Wednesday, I could have a polar opposite view if stall one is is is. Is not the place to be, um, but yeah. So I thought concierge was interesting. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. So anyway, that's that's, that's just something. Uh, Two twenty-five. We've got the European Free <coughs> Handicap, a quality affair. Uh, the bookmakers have priced it up. They got seven to four naval crown. John looks competitive to me. This. What did you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I like the top two of the horses very much. Um, Ontario, I think, despite. Four defeats at the, the end of the season. Um, I think you showed a, a progressive type of form, really. Um, the pedigree indicates there could be more improvement to come this year. 
uh, the fact that Aiden sometimes runs on plenty at two, he doesn't seem to run Ali and Prelvin's out of them. Um, mm-hmm. and I, I don't think this one has a bit more to offer yet. And uh, I'm not with betting unless I think it looks really straight because uh, it wouldn't be the biggest shock if it turned up just in need of it. But um, I, I, that, that's the, the one I'll be, I'll be glued to, shall we say, to see how it gets on. Yeah, I mean, uh, fair, fair point with Aidan, because right, the one thing we do criticise, we, we criticise Aidan for what he does to the derby, and possibly certain other group ones that have, have got, like, obviously, pedigree value. Um, but the one thing with Aiden is, which, which the likes of probably Nicky Henderson and a few of the jumps boys could probably learn, is that they're not frightened to run them, are they? You know, the, the, no. the, 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 I know they've got plenty of stock to run, which is probably an explanation why they keep running uh, the horse. I mean, I mean, if we if we own probably an horse like um, Ontario, we yeah. <laughs> we prob- we probably went made and um, finished third to Max Swiney in that group too. And think, lovely, yeah. this. let's put it away for next year. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> but it's, it's, like, it's kind of obviously they've got multiple stop, but like you said, they're just not frightened of turning up wherever, are they really? No. Um, so that's got a mark of 109. Uh, Naval Crown, which uh, won uh, in Maidan, uh, beat Master of the Seas at Maidan, John. Mm. That's the, uh, I believe, I, I'll have to check, but, I'm, but I believe Master of the Seas has been put in favour for the Craven on yeah. Thursday. And Naval Crown spanked its ass. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's going to be significant, isn't it? It's kind of like the, seeing how this gets on. I mean, uh, yeah. I, uh, I, I don't see this as something that could spank a Craven when his ass myself. <laughs> Sorry for laughing. I know, there's another... I think, I'm just thinking what John Nolan's thinking. No, no. <laughs> he, he, he thinks I'm in the Bronx. <laughs> uh, he's brilliant. Uh, the timing's amazing. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like you said, I mean, if this were to sort of like piss up in the free handicap, um, that definitely points to Master of the Season, the Craven. Yeah. So, you know, so in a way, the, the, these are what's informative types. You know, if, the, if this does win well, then maybe just get onto your bookies and and take the price on Master of the Seas because obviously, when 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 the day after comes, everyone's going to be, you know, thinking, "Ooh, this form's all right," um, kind of thing. Um, obviously, Naval Crown shouldn't have beaten Master of the Seas uh, at Maida. Uh Master of the Seas was based, basically held up in the rear. Naval Crown led. Um, and you know, as we've seen at Maid, and even on the turf, if you get easy leads around there, it, it seems to play to an advantage. Um, I, again, I found this extremely tough. If someone's asking me for a bet, I'm 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 looking at the tissue and I'm struggling. I, I really am. I think it's incredibly competitive, um, I, I, and I wouldn't have an earthly at what to bet at the prices. So I'm sorry, I'd, I, I absolutely help no one, but mate, but. But maybe, like I said, if you watch Naval Crown, if Naval, Naval Crown's impressive uh, in winning the free handicap, then make sure you get your bet on for Master of the Seas literally after the race, if, if that's the one you like in the Craven the day after. Because obviously the price will just, just crash. Right, we move on to the Earl of Sefton, where Global Giant is the 10-11 to favourite, John. Yeah, um... I'm I'm still kind of between two stills with this horse. I uh, I thought he did it very well last time, um, but you know he was entitled to uh, the running forest of Dane against. It. They're, not, they're not worried about taking it on. Uh, the one I like to me, uh, well, like like might be pushing it, but. Uh, I'm very, very interested to see the persevering with San Donato and Roger Varians. Uh, uh, he seemed a little bit tripless last year. Well, I, I felt it was still a bit on the wake side and still a bit immature. 
Yeah. In, in, in its running style and everything. And I think there might be a bit of improvement to come with this this year. I think this sort of intermediate trip might help it. It's a fairly easy track to get the trip as well. You can ride it nice and uncomplicated. Uh, the horse isn't that far away on the official figures anyway. He's, uh, he's only a pound behind Global Giant. Um, and I think I do think of, of all these, he's, he, he's probably the one that's got the most scope to improve, actually. I, I sort of agree with that, in that uh, he's not fulfilled his potential. No. Uh, and, the, and I think there's a reason for that. I mean, you use the word, sorry, immature, and I use the, the word sometimes an absolutely rabid, you know, rabid sort of beast. Paul can be very keen, very hard on itself. And, and, it, and you just wish some days it would just drop the bit and just, and just you know, race professionally because I think this horse is definitely group one if it, if it decides to do everything the right way. But for some reason, every time, it just, it, it just kind of like makes it hard for itself. Either like, it, you think, well, drop this back in trip, let's drop back in it. Can, it's you like believe so it? Can you believe it's still an entirely? Well, that's it. Maybe, you know, may, right? may, maybe a beard has got hopes that this could be a sight. It could be. I mean, when it was, yeah. I mean, when it was second to Mahava um, in the summer mile, um, again, again, you know, it's ruining its chance by just being absolutely, you know, you're having yeah. to settle it. You're spending half your race trying to settle it and slot, calm it down. Now, if, if they found the key to it, well, this could literally take off at any time, and it would be better than the unit would be Grade One. So, I, I, I do think, I do think it's it's a good little perk that. But uh, Global Giants poor value. It was extremely impressive at Kempton last time, but that's obviously on the artificial. It's by Shamadal. It's bred to be better on the artificial than it is on turf. Um, and I, I wouldn't be interested in that at all. Its form on turf last year was decent. But it, for me, it was it was rather ordinary in this country. Um, beating extra elusive by a length and then like, finishing three lengths behind extra elusive for me does not make it a 10 to 11 chance here. And this is not Kempton. And bearing in mind that probably Stormy Atlantic that it thrashed last time probably wasn't fit. Um, mm. I, I don't think 10 to 11 offers any value whatsoever. So I'm with John Sandonato. One at a price that might be a price. And could 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 be the absolute upset in the apple cart. Could be solid stern. <laughs> Sir, Michael Stout, Sir Michael Stout has started the year off just in incredible form. His horses are in such well being. You can see it every single day. He runs them. His strike rate's immense so far. It's over forty percent. Um, and solid stern has always been thought of as as a real potentially top class animal. And the fact that last season, when Sir Michael, with his problems with his wife, obviously passing away, he's probably just not had his focus right there. This was still running to 110 in handicaps. So you, this is a, one at a price that could just, just you know, upset the apple cart kind of thing. But an interesting race, nevertheless, is the Earl of Sefton tomorrow. Right, we go to the big classic trial, John. The big, the big, uh, uh, the Nell Gwynn, the seven furlong, uh, one of my favourite races. Remember horses like Musical Bliss in it, and you know, like going back in the day. Love this, love this race as a classic trial. Even though the last one to win it and go on to win the Guineas was Specioza in two thousand and six. And Petrushka won this. Petrushka, Petrushka. I'm sure Specioza was the last one to do double. But did Petrushka win Guineas? No. No. Oh, and, no, and she got Beijing Oaks as well. That's uh, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think when Nell Gwynn finished her off for a while and then she. <laughs> and came back, yeah. And came back right in July for Irish Oaks. There's only Pam Sly that can that can do a Nell yeah. Gwynn at Guinea double in this life. It does <laughs> seem to be a bit of a job, doesn't it? Um, really. Uh, I mean, I've, I, I've, I've got a. Track her house in this in Love Is You, Roger Charlton's. Yeah. Um, I constantly expected her turning up either in this or the Fred Darling. Uh, 
she definitely up to this class for me. Um, I think, uh, well, this, this is this will decide her, her program for the rest of the year. I would have thought, you know, I mean, she goes well here. She run the guineas. If not, it'll be the music era. I would have thought. Yeah, I'm totally in in agreement with you. Um, I think Love Is You impressed me a lot last year. Uh, a resolution, her attitude. Um, I don't think she enjoyed the um, bottomless ground at Newbury. Oh no, no. But had the constitution to plough through it and destroy what was. Let's be honest. I mean, we might sort of look at it and say, well, you know, an eighty-two horse, and you think well, that's not very good. But this horse, um, prior to that, was second in the auction race uh, to Just Frank and has since finished second at Keeneland in yeah. a grade two since being sold to run abroad. Mm-hmm. I don't, I, it was better than 82. 82 was not the... the, the pro, it looks in the form book. Think, well, I was only rated 82, but I think yeah. gift list was probably mid-90s at the time rather than 82. Sure. Um, so Love Is You with, and with the winner Ascot as well. Um, I, I just think it's a really, really nice horse, and the condition should be ideal. Dan Silly, Dan Sire, uh, Kingman, um, and I just think this filly is top class and will be top class this year, and I hope it is. Um, for Norman D. Stud, so and Roger Charlton, so yeah, I, I'm with you. We love you in this. I think she is the one that I want to be back in, um, en route to hopefully uh, a big run in the uh, thousand guineas. So me and she, John she, she be my better the day there today. Right, so you've heard it there. So John's better the day for Wednesday is will be Love Is You in the uh, three thirty five race. That's the Nell Gwyn. Okay, so just covering one more race off. Uh, not really covering it off. My better the day is going to be. I think John knows this uh, already. Um, the 410 race there, that's the European Breeders Fund uh, Phillies Maiden. <laughs> and I'm going maximum confidence and max bet on Snowland, the filly of Richard Hannans. Um, I was absolutely <clears throat> uber impressed with her last year. Um, she you'd, you'd love a bit of this Press Association tissue, wouldn't you? I mean, if she's going to be 7 or 2, um, I'm absolutely just dying to, to just pile in because th- th- this filly for me is definitely group one, will be group one this year at some point, don't know when, um, you know, ne- not necessarily spring, um, but I think we'll win this um, because of Richard Allen's confidence. Richard Allen said last back last autumn, he said that he would have her in at Christmas, which I believe he has, and he she'd, be, she'd win a trial. And I, I assume that she'd be going for like a Nell Gwyn or a, a, a Fred Darling. Um, so I'm like quite shocked that she's... Now, don't, don't get me wrong. These maidens aren't easy to win. You know, you, you, you could be running into one that ends up, ends up 110. It's, it's, it, it, you can't just think, well, it's a maiden. But at the same time, I do think she's well over 100. Um, I think she's very good like her mum. I think she's probably better than her mum, which is, or will be better than her mum. Sky Lantern, which obviously multiple Group One winner, and she on the on the clock. For example, she was held up at Ascot on debut, and she ran an amazing race, absolutely amazing race, because she she gave track position to Zabiel Queen, uh, and gave Zabiel she missed the break, gave Zabiel Zabiel Queen a good four four length start, and nearly murdered down. You know, got got right to a quarters before flattening out. Well, if you look at Zabiel Queen. She's definitely 100. She's proven that she's 100. Well, if she's 100, then uh, Snow Lantern must be 105 at least um, and possibly more. And I, I do believe she'll be more. So she would be my not only my the, the bet of Wednesday, she'd be a bet of the week. And I'd also be looking um, to maybe just have a very small stake on her um, in the 1,000 guineas because I just I believe she's nice and got a lovely constitution. Very excited for her on the Wednesday. So John's best bet. Um John loves love, love is you in the Nell Gwyn. That's a three thirty five. And in the four ten race, um my bet of the, the, the week and the, the, the day is um 
the Richard Hannon trained Snow Lantern. I think that's right, good advice to... from you as well, Lee, because I don't think if she punches up, she, she'll definitely run the guineas. Absolutely. You know, I mean, if she, if she won that impressively, she, she wouldn't be a big prize for the guineas because it isn't the fact that, oh, well, she's not... I mean, everyone loves Aidan O'Brien. Everyone loves, loves the uh, affiliate theirs or whatever. But the point is, it's a pedigree that the, the mom's done it in gr- uh, grade ones. And, 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 I, and I think she's also of that ilk. I, can t- I like her physically. I like everything about her. Um, the, the clock backs me up. My gut feelings twitching, and I'd love to get a lovely price about her on Wednesday, but I've probably spoiled it for myself now. If anyone's uh, listening, though, Leslie will be pressing pink night before to help the price. Um, <laughs> good old, come on, Leslie, press pink Thursday night, hold it up for us. Um, we go to Thursday, um, the final day, last but not least, it's the big day really for Newmarket. We've got, um, I love, I love watching the wood din, um. The wood didn't of, of, of years gone by when horses are struggling. Horses that have won that struggle to win. They're not seventy eight by by autumn for some so, reason. The wood, uh, the, there know. was a scholar I thought that said the wood didn't was a fantastic trial for a juvenile novice at Plumpton in October. <laughs> yeah, kind of weird because you, you kind of expect it to be like a, a top. And some don't get me wrong. Some years it has produced decent decent horses, but. Many, many a time, the form just doesn't seem to work out for some reason. It, it's a strange race, you know. I mean, it, it can look good as well, you know. I mean, you can get two straight pulling clear. You think, well, they're yeah. all right, you know. I and mean, then they're off like mid-70s end of the year, you know, and they can't win. Yeah. You know, start then, me off with... Which, which, which race would you like to start off on Thursday, John? Um... Um, I want the Avenant. We'll go to the Avenant. Okay, then. So we'll look at the Avenant. So we, we're going to miss the Wood Din. We've got nothing in the Wood Din. We're bored of the Wood Din. Um, we've got Ox Ted that's four to six on the uh, early prices. Obviously, the classy Ox Ted. Have you got any value against that, John? I thought... Um... I thought some again is fantastic battle at the minute and <laughs> the sky's the limit for the arse, you know, I mean, it sounds, sounds a bit daffy and the seven-year-old is just improving or whatever, you know, but I, I don't think the horse is in a rich way in a farm at the minute. Um, track's maybe not ideal for it, you know, but if you were going to play against the uh, the fantastic Oxted and uh, the the fantastic Mr. Tail. Uh, you'd probably be. You can go worse and have, have a couple of shekels on some again. I think. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, it's, it's probably been in my life that that I was the first to sort of spot some again this season, having a float up at Lingfield. So I kept my eye on it. I thought, well, keep my eye on this. Um, Wolverhampton. Um, it ran uh, two absolute blinders. Um, and I'm thinking there's so much more to come from this. Then, so what do we do? We have us plums on at Doncaster, and it gets a, it gets a thick day of ride, doesn't it? Yeah, I got the rider ride, didn't it? I mean, <laughs> rider ride, ride. Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, um, I mean, might, as well, I, might as well have been Michael Barrymore set up there. I mean, I'll tell. Listen, I did my bollocks. I mean, I, I lift. I had. I had something like fifteen hundred quid to place four, uh, three places as well, not four. Um, and 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 uh, and a bit didn't win, and and I just thought, what the hell? I just I just literally just couldn't couldn't believe it. So of course, I, I think you tipped it up uh, when when it won at Linkfield last time, and yeah. and I just couldn't be bothered. I said to you, I said, well, yeah. Link, back to Link. I'm not I'm not happy there at that track. It's a quick track. They put the vibes on first time. And I just, I just got nerved. I thought I don't want to back it at Lingfield. It's not a Lingfield horse. No. Um, no. And it still won despite of that. So yeah, six to one again. John Stevie. John's on the thief. Um, <laughs> for his, uh, for his yeah, first deal. yeah, yeah. Just think, yeah, you know, it's an each way to play against it. I suppose it's a good thing. You know, I mean, is it a good thing? You know, it's been a while since he won, isn't it? You know, yeah. 
Um, yeah, I'm not going to add anything to that really. Um, like I said, four to six tops. I mean, I mean, yeah, but we all know, we all know that, that the horse is there. Uh, Possibly uh, going to be different class, um, not necessarily on the day. It's a long season. It's had a pipe opener um, in the desert, um, obviously running at uh, which Saudi Arabia at Riyadh. Um, Was that the place really, where none of them knew where they wanted to be, and they were all swapping sides? I think so. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that, that kind of went all wrong. Um, so yeah. Anyway. So John has got uh, some again each way there for you in the abonnant. We move on to <coughs> the Bet365 Craven Stake, the Group 3 event, which is the flagship race of uh, the new market meeting, and it's uh, worth a paltry 25000 for the winner. John? Incredible prize, money. Um, <laughs> really, isn't it? I mean, disgusting. Uh, You'd be flabbergasted as well if half of these ran, probably. Um, Aidan's not attacking it with his usual gusto. Um, uh, Ontario's obviously not going to run in it. Uh, unlikely that Van Gogh will turn up, um, which maybe leaves us with Sandhurst and Khartoum. Uh, well, I think Sanders would probably be his best job out, 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 of, his, out of his floor. Uh, Chindit was interesting. Uh, very progressive up until it ran in the gear worst. And then ran two in the gear worst. The both ran like shit. Um, no reason forthcoming. Um, I think... I think I can see why they're making Master of the Seas favourite. But I do not want to back it. And yeah. I'm struggling to find a viable alternative, if you get me. Um, you know, I, th I, th I think we've, we've got all we're getting from Master of the Seas. I think about 112, 115. That, that's him, I think. Yeah. I agree with you. Uh, uh, now, some of these could progress past, but I think there's some running maybe earlier in the week, or maybe even at Newbury, that there were a bit more progression in them than some of the opposition, eh? Um, so while Master of the Seas might win this, to my mind, he wouldn't be really enhancing his Guinness prospect. You know, I, I don't think he'll be telling us anything we don't already know about him if he wins this. No, it, it's, it's one of them, really, that, again, it, I think it's tied into the free handicap. I think if, if Naval Crown wins the free handicap and, yeah. and, and does, that, does that well, then at Master of the Seas, there is, well, the way I see it is the Craven could cut up quite badly. Um, yeah. And I would... You know, it's one of them. You might end up with a very small field. I could be wrong on this. Nineteen's sort of like entered, but just got this feeling it just might kind of might kind of cut up a bit. Um, and I would be uh, loath to oppose Master of the Seas if Naval Crown did did obviously win win the the free handicap because, like you said, I do think Master of the Seas is about one ten to one fifteen yeah. in that kind of range. Now that's probably going to be quite hard to beat. I think, given given the entry. So, again, I've just watched the free handicap. If Naval Crown wins the free handicap, then, you know, get on your buttons quick and just back Master of the Seas at the price with the bookies because that's the shrewd play. Because there's no way then that that's going to start whatever you've just taken. So, <laughs> so again, it's just common sense advice. Without, without telling you what's going to win the Craven, it's kind of that's the advice. Watch the free handicap on the Wednesday. You know, so if, if Naval Crown wins the free handicap, yeah, you can put yourself simply... in the box seat, can't you? Well, why not have why, why not have the price that it is at that point compared yeah. to the price it'll be when you wake up the day after? Because Naval Crown's yeah. pissed up in the free handicap. That's the exactly. kind of thinking you've got. You've got to have in these things because yeah. both ran at Maid and both will be fit. There'll be no fitness issues, I don't think so. 
it's kind of you know that's that's the game I think. Um, I'll come on to my bet of Thursday before we finish. Um, just quickly, four forty-five new market. It's the mile uh, bet builder three six five handicap, and it is uh, Chirizo, uh the David Lofnane train horse. Very eye catching at Wolverhampton on on reappearance. Uh, quite weak in the betting. David Lofnane is not great off absences, uh, off, and basically this gave a lot of ground away and didn't have the run of the race, nearly knocked off <coughs> the Richard Hannon trained Zuelele, Zuelele, <laughs> have I pronounced that right? Zuelele. Um, won its last two, very progressive horse, by the way, Zuelele, Lele, of Richard Hannon, and um, Chirit so sort of nearly picked it off, and I think this is very well handicapped off 86. There's a lot of question marks in the race, and I do think Chirit so, um can um, certainly make them all go in that. So that would be my best bet on Thursday, Chirizo in the 4.45. John, your best bet to finish us off. Let's have a roar. Well, I don't know about a roar, but uh, it's beating all in the 4.10. Have a look. That's the, uh, oh, the novice race. Yeah. Over uh, 10 I think this is a nice off. Um... I was very impressed with this when it won on the hour at the, at the back end, um, and I think uh, I think it's got a future. Uh, the ground will be right for it. I wouldn't want to say it on soft ground at all, but I mean this will this will be perfect for it. It, it. It's the the type of horse that could progress. And make up in when they do the seventh type for uh, Ascot for me. Um, yeah. And uh, I, th- I think it's got a lot going for it against some of these. And I'm, I'm not over enamoured with the, either the Appleby or the Gosden horses. Um, Lord Protector won't be running the course. Um, the, the danger might come from technique, actually, Martin made. I thought that did quite well. And there we go. But I, I like beating all very much, and uh, I, I think you can win that. Well, I think that's a really good choice. I mean, like I said, Sir Michael Stout, Saeed to Hale, love the combination of the two. I love. I think. I think Saeed to Hale is is always been one of Sir Michael's best patrons. Um, I, I love anything that they, I always take an eye with anything that they have, and the fact that Stout has just started this year off just incredible form you'd like to think that anything that whatever they ran last last year they're just going to improve another 10 or 14 on top because nothing just he just never seemed to have anything right you know at any yeah. point um, and you know we were disappointed at the end of last season with what what he produced and but this season just seems a different kettle of fish so he's come out with traps that. like Mick the Miller hasn't he yeah so Beating all there, a very, very good selection, I think, that from John. Um, that goes in the 4.10 on the last day. John, what would be the best bet over the three days, just if they wanted a nap for the entire meeting? Which one are you three? That one. So beating all for John, I think you know mine, it's Snow Lantern uh, the yes. day before. Um, we've got six selections there for you over the three days. Hopefully you're going to certainly win some money before we leave you um just announced that we will be back on friday for the greenham and that's the greenham meeting at newbury and the scottish national which is now moved to sunday down to uh, buffalo's funeral on on saturday at three o'clock so obviously the best racing has been moved so but we'll still be there on friday evening usual time ish around about seven thirty. And uh, we'll be giving you our best bets for that meeting, which is obviously, again, important Guineas trials, which me and John like to think we excel at, which we don't, but we try. And we'll be back for then. I hope you enjoyed this show. Hopefully we'll have some winners over the Craven meeting and we'll be all cashed up for the weekend. Bye for now.